Thank you very much. We now come to uh, a sort of slightly extended technical highlight, which will be from uh, Stefan Meyer, who is uh, now a professor of nanophotonics here at uh, the Imperial Physics Department, and uh, was originally recruited, as Leslie mentioned, via uh, EPSC SNI award. So, yeah, okay. more. thanks a lot for the intro, Milo. And yes, um, as you just said, so it's particularly my pleasure to be able to speak here because without the Science and Innovation Award, I would most probably not be here. So, what I will uh, um, show you now in the next 10-15 minutes or so are some examples on how we uh, use nanotechnology to um, achieve something that is not that straightforward to achieve and that's the uh, marriage between phototonics and very small length scales because that unfortunately needs to be a uh, forced marriage. Now why would anybody be interested to work in, in photonics and optical devices? I guess well uh, that doesn't really need a lot of motivation. We can just look at uh, this this graph here that I put up uh, which shows the number of distinct users of the World Wide Web and how it is how it has developed over the last 20 years and it's actually quite a staggering number if you look at it so we had something like now 2 billion users of the World Wide Web and of course that has been enabled by two photonic devices one of them active the laser where we just had the 50 year anniversary two years ago and fiber optics which was also just uh, recently awarded the um, Nobel Prize. So now what we would all like to do in order to continue this revolution in, in photonics and to really make it into the defining or into one of the defining sciences of the 21st century is to make things smaller, faster and cheaper. And as um, argu arguably the most famous group ever coming out of Oxford has put it, this will also ma all make us fitter, happier and more productive. Now, uh, now we can't guarantee that but as we already heard, heard uh, previously Moore's law has certainly done something close to that for, for nano, nano electronics. An equally staggering number than the worldwide web users is the number of, of transistors that you now find on modern, on modern chips. So now we would very much like to do the same thing for, for, for tonics. But um, unfortunately there's a problem that we need to overcome in order to make all these dreams come through here, uh, such as uh, building highly efficient solar cells, optical computing with a vastly um, increased data storage density and so on and so forth. And that's the fact that light is a wave phenomena, meaning that if you have a three-dimensional beam of light and it doesn't really matter if it's a laser beam or if it's a uh, light beam propagating in an optical fiber or if it's a beam that we focus with a microscope, we cannot confine it uh, much smaller than uh, about the wavelength, which is about one order of magnitude higher than than typical components in your, in your um, nano-electronic nano chips. So it's this so-called the uh, fraction limit that needs to be uh, beaten. But unfortunately there's a, way, there's a way around that, there's a way to bring light to the nanoscale and that is actually using a, using a phenomenon that is, that, is all, that is all around us and that's been known for hundreds of years. And you can see uh, one of the nicest examples actually right here in London on the, uh, in the, in the uh, British Museum. This is the so-called Lycurgus cup from the Roman Empire. It's a glass cup that looks red in transmitted light, it looks green and, uh, in, in reflected light and the color is due to the fact that it contains uh, small noble metal nanoparticles. Now when light hits small noble metal nanoparticles it can couple to its, um, to its um, con conduction electrons and confine the light, as we see hopefully in that movie now, right to the surface of the metallic nanoparticle. So that's a way to get around this natural limit of, of the wavelength and to force a marriage between the length scale of these metallic units here, which can be as small as just a couple of tens of nanometers, and the wavelength of light, which is on the order of uh, hundreds of nanometers. And the um, fundamental uh, physical excitation is called a plasmon, hence the name nano, nanoplasmonics. So um, a really nice way to think about it is that nanoplasmonics and optics with metallic nanostructure really uh, enables us to control color on the, uh, on the nanoscale. You see some uh, nice examples here of how silver particles of slightly different shapes, you can see the different shapes here, how they look when you um, illuminate them with visible light and it's clear, uh, one thing is clear, they look nothing like um, silver and uh, that is due to the fact that you have this 
that you have this um, light concentration. So it's really all about uh, optics meets nano nanotechnology and it has the potential to really revolutionize all areas of science and technology where light is a prominent ingredient. And what, what we are now very interested in is how can we use modern nanofabrication and modern nano, uh, nano characterization structures to build useful com components for this new science of light on the nanoscale, how to image them and how to analyze them. So uh, this, is, this is the group that's um, working with me on this. Two of them uh, were actually funded via the original Science and Innovation Award, and I'm delighted that both of them are still here. One is Yannick Sonnefro, who joined one, uh, three and a half years ago as my postdoc. And even more important, uh, Dang Yang Lei, my first grad student, jointly funded via the Rector's Award at Imperial and um, Science and Innovation Award, and he will actually defend his thesis tomorrow. So, um, hence, I will also show some of his work. And uh, of, of the many different things that we do, I thought to highlight in my remaining couple of minutes a, a few that are very much connected to the Science and Innovation Award, not only because they make use of the equipment that we bought with it, but uh, actually they have something to do with the science that we promise to be uh, liver. And the first part is in the area of nanometrology and uh, sensing. This, uh, this light concentration of a small metallic nanoparticle to its surface namely uh, allows us to uh, do nanometrology on the nanoscale. Hence, uh, and, and that is because the color of the metallic nanoparticle also depends on what is happening at its immediate surface. So, um, so, so for example, if we have, if we have a ma material, and it like, doesn't really matter what it is, in, in this case it is vanadium dioxide, which can undergo, if we heat it up, a, a phase transition from one phase into, an, into another phase, then one can nicely map uh, that out, basically just by shining light, through such a film heating and cooling and looking in the transmitted in uh, intensity. But that's of course always just an average e effect. What you would really like to do if you have such a, such a material and, and you can see a blow up of it here, you can see this very rough, we would like to see how can we build a nanometrological tool to look at such phase transitions on the nanoscale. And it's actually very, very easy. Uh, the most simplest way, you buy metallic nanoparticles, you just sprinkle them on the surface. Here you see one, it, uh, it looks yellow, you can see it lying here, it's a small gold particle. And now you just watch the color of this particle as you undergo the phase transition, so as you heat and as you cool. And uh, this way you can, you can learn um, about many things like um, domain boundaries, the um, quality of the surface and so on and so forth. And uh, other example is the um, sensing of um, uh, overlayers. This is some work we do uh, together with a group of Leslie Cohen, which uh, shows how the optical spectra of a metallic nanostructure uh, such as this here shifts if you put a single layer of graphene on it. Yeah? So basically what like uh, um, one of the key messages is here is that these uh, small metallic nanostructures, they are extremely sensitive to what's going on um, right around them. Now um, we uh, don't just want to work with small colloids, um, so not just to work with a bottom-up uh, approach, but we also want to make use of the excellent facilities that we have here within the LCN framework for top-down assembly, because that allows us to um, really bring some very interesting fundamental physics into the, into the problem. So uh, one project here, and we uh, started that uh, together with Dave, together with Dave Mc, McComb, um, uh, who, um, of course, brought the untightened microscope to the LCN, was to look at much more complex shaped metallic nanostructures. So, like you can see some here, basically different arrays of different arrays of triangles uh, in uh, this case, and that is really now used to be able to control the uh, shape and the frequencies at which we can build these nanoscale light spots. Yeah? So like you can see the length scale here, that's on the order of 50 nanometers. So we are speaking of gaps on the order of just a couple of tens of nanometers. And uh, we can actually image these light spots with our Titan transmission electron microscopes. So, uh, here, we don't excite them via a wave, via shining a laser light on it, but we excite them actually via the fields of an electron beam that we just pass next to these um, structures. And you can see here now some, I think, really, really spec spectacular looking images of, uh, of, some of, these, of some of these different modes. So, so you see here we have confined light on an area here on the order of just five, uh, of just five nano, nanometers. And if you just look at the nice symmetry, you uh, might appreciate that for somebody interested in fundamental physics, there's quite a lot of fun to be had with this. Here's, an, here's another example of uh, how we use these um, techniques to ask the quite fundamental question, when does classical electromagnetism break down? When does the classical description of light break down? And when do we need to start with um, quantum, quantum effects? So here we created nanostructures where we make the gap smaller and smaller and smaller in between them. And this is now really the highest art 
of uh, electron beam lithography. So going to gaps to below about one nanometer. And then we use this um, Titan tool in order to look at these fundamental resonances in there. And we compare it with classical theory. And uh, quite, quite surprisingly, actually, the classical theory holds all the way down to the nanometer re regime. Good, so now I'm just, to, just to finish off, I will just show some other possible uh, applications of metallic nanostructures. This is now taken from a, from a number of different groups. There's research all over the world going on, for example, of using metallic nanostructures for cancer therapy. Um, if you shape your structures the right way, this light oscillation can decay mostly into heat. So if you bring it next to a cell, it can induce cell death. Yeah? You can build something like a nanoscale television television antenna. Some of you might still remember these Yagi Uda style antennas that you saw on uh, many roofs. Now, not to um, uh, harvest radio waves, but to change the light emission of a single molecule. And of course, uh, if you think about planet care, and, and uh, other big topic is to make very highly um, efficient solar cells. Also, their metallic nanostructures can be used. And now I uh, want to finish off with um, one example of just really um, showing you how that one of the areas that makes this particular research so um, exciting, particularly for uh, me, is that uh, it really attracts people with uh, many, many different backgrounds. So uh, even if you are more, let's say, uh, uh, coming from, a, from like more like a mathematical background, there's like something in there for you. So like this is work that we are doing together with, the, with a group of John Penry, where we, where we ask the question, how can we design a metallic nanostructure that is very, very small, but at the same time can harvest light, can concentrate light over a very, very broad spectral range. And, un and unfortunately, the answer is, well, that needs to be an infinite structure. It needs to be an infinite metal film. If you place a molecule right above an infinite metal film, that molecule can excite concentrated light at that surface at all possible frequencies mainly. But then you can use a mathematical tool, which is basically just a coordinate transformation. You kind of just compress the, uh, the, 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 um, the uh, space around this in a, in a certain manner, like this, uh, well, with a formula, like you see here, and then you can up, uh, and then you end up with a very complex looking nano, nano cavity, but that has exactly the same light harvesting properties as this extended film. So um, it uh, can create light spots uh, with, an, with an, uh, an intensity enhancement of about a factor of 1,000 over broad spectral range. And one example where we like want to use that now, and that's um, together uh, with a group of Norbert Klein here in the, in the material science department is we uh, want to use that to uh, sense uh, nasty substances using terahertz frequencies. So like what we use there is we uh, use metallic nano, nano, nanostructures um, to create highly enhanced fields, but the main problem there is that the bandwidth is always far too small. So being guided by these uh, mathematical principles of conformal transformations, which leads to structures such as this, we have already been able to enhance the bandwidth of light concentration that we can get here by about a factor two. And uh, if we manage another factor two or so, then we would be in business for looking at, well, uh, we better probably don't know what these um, structures are here, actually. So with that, um, um, I just was able to show you a little bit of the research that we do. These are the collaborators that have heavily contributed to it. There are a number of posters that uh, you can see that show more of that. And with that, I want to thank you.